All right, so today I want to take just a few minutes and show y'all how to disassemble and reassemble your Remington 1148. You might also have a Sportsman 48, a Mohawk 48, or you could just have the standard one like I have here, the Model 1148. But what I do here will work for all three models because all the parts are interchangeable. So uh, follow along with me and we'll get this done. All right, so the first thing you need to always do is make sure your chamber is empty, as mine is. You need to take the four-end cap off right here, unscrew that. You might have to pull down on the barrel slightly while you do this to loosen the tension because this is a recoil-operated gun. All right, now you can take your four-end off. Now you can take your barrel off. Okay? So once you have your forend and your barrel off, you still got your recoil spring. And some of them have the uh, friction piece built in. Friction ring, I guess you could say. This piece right here. The modern models will have it built into the spring like mine does here. And then you'll have your friction piece. Take your friction piece off. Take your recoil spring off. All right, so you have that torn apart. So now it gets down to the receiver. And it's not too hard to take apart. You want to take a flathead or a Phillips head screwdriver. If you want to get you know fancy with it, you can use punches. I just use a screwdriver. Okay, so once you have your charging handle removed from right here, and you have your trigger assembly out, your breech bolt assembly will just slide out of the front and set that to the side. So now you have everything off. You've got your barrel off, your forend off, your friction piece, your recoil spring. You've removed your breech bolt assembly, your trigger assembly, your takedown pins, and your shell latch. All right, past that, the only other thing I would recommend doing is in the stock. What you would need to do is take a Phillips head screwdriver. There's two screws. You'll remove the butt plate, and then you need a long flat head screwdriver, and there's a big flat head-like head in there. It's, it's really more of a big bolt, and you'll remove that, and then your stock will pull loose. Once you pull your stock loose, I'll add a picture on here of what it will look like. There is an action spring that is contained within the stock. If the action spring wears out, breaks, or if the small wooden dowel, it's called an action spring plug, technically, if it breaks, you can have issues. That is the issue that I have with this gun. It was not cycling the shells whatsoever. It was tearing the plastic away from the brass. I just had no idea what was going on. A gunsmith couldn't even fix it. He told me he did everything he knew to do. Obviously, he didn't check there. So if you're having trouble and you can't figure out what's going on, you definitely need to check that out. But past that, it's time to reassemble. Let's get back to it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is slide my breech bolt back in. We've got that back. I'm going to reinstall my charging handle. Okay, that's back in. Now, Remember when I told you about the shell latch? When you put this, this shell latch in here, it'll be under some tension, okay? So you need to make sure that you keep it pushed back as you drop the trigger assembly in. One thing that I didn't mention is when you drop your breech bolt assembly in, you need to make sure that the lap links actually go and slide into that little seat, which is where the action spring runs into the stock, okay? Because if it's not in that seat, it will not operate properly. Okay, now as for your shell latch, 
your shell latch will be faced like that with the little groove pointing the outside of the receiver. Now the trick that I was going to show you is once you have your shell latch in, you can take that front pin and go ahead and start it through just to get it kind of held in place. Okay, now once you have the shell latch in place, you can start that pin and that'll kind of hold it in while you drop in your trigger assembly. All right, now that everything's back in with the trigger assembly and the shell latch, we got the breech block up front. We can go ahead and drop those pins in. And there's one more look of what the recoil spring looks like on here. And like I said, some models you might have the friction rings, they call them separate, but with this one it's built in. And then you have your friction piece. And that sits right up front. And the barrel will fit up against it like so. For those of you interested, this one right here of mine I think is a 63 model. I think it was like one of the last years it was made. But anyway, I bought this gun at a pawn shop and obviously it had a few problems but I figured it out and it wasn't too costly and now it's made a really great shooter. So if you're thinking about getting one and possibly shooting it in the field, you know you might have to grab a few parts here and there and I find most of those off of eBay because unfortunately they don't make a lot of these parts. But anyway, they do make great field guns and great shooters. This particular one is a 16 gauge. Okay, there you have it. We've completely disassembled and reassembled our Model 1148. Now what I always recommend is to take a light coat of WD-40 or a similar oil, also use Ballastol, and just wipe it down and anywhere you've handled that blue and you want to make sure you get that oil off. So. Thanks for watching and I hope this helped you. Uh, I hope if you have trouble in the future or want to disassemble and just clean your firearm, I hope this helps you.